Hi, happy NaNoWriMo season. So I put out a poll, asked you guys if you were doing NaNoWriMo this year. Some of you guys said yes, some of you guys said no. Some of you said yes, but not exactly doing it the traditional way. If you don't know what NaNoWriMo is, it is National Novel Writing Month. It happens every year in November where basically writers around the world all commit to working on their books for the month of November. The typical NaNoWriMo format is that you spend October brainstorming a book project or you know outlining a book project whatever and then on November 1st you start writing it and the goal is to get to 50,000 words by the end of the month and if you write 50,000 words in the month of November you have one NaNoWriMo. Typically what that means is that you have to write 2,500 words every single day in the month of November so it's a crazy time and writers are all losing their minds together it's it's fun um, but it's also really stressful if you are a writer like me who is slow and <laughs> hates word count goals like I literally hate word count goals um, the NaNoWriMo can kind of I don't know you kind of get like a sense of FOMO because you're not participating in it in the same way as you know other people do I have made a video on NaNoWriMo last year where I was kind of like talking about my modified goals. I was thinking about doing that again this year, but I don't really have like any concrete NaNoWriMo goals. I am working on a book this year. I I will be like dedicating myself to a single manuscript of this month. So in that sense, I am doing NaNoWriMo, but I'm not actively trying to write 50,000 words, but I am trying to write every day and I am trying to make significant progress on my book. That's basically my goal for NaNoWriMo this year. But today I thought that I would instead talk about how you can succeed at NaNoWriMo, even if you are lazy. I am also sometimes lazy. I don't have the motivation and the drive to like write 2500 words um, in a single day. Like for me, my ultimate peak is like 1000 words in a day. You know what I mean? Yeah. So these are some ways that you can make the most out of NaNoWriMo, even if you're not doing it the traditional way. I want it all. Like you gotta wait for it, honey. I know I've been in your head like shea butter, honey. You go out and tell your friends that we ain't none. So the first one, and I feel like this one is super obvious, but just modify the word count goal. You don't have to write 2,500 words if you don't want to. Um, obviously, if you are committing to a traditional NaNoWriMo, maybe this doesn't apply to you, but there are other ways to track progress outside of word count. I know I've said this a bajillion times on my channel, and I know a lot of other people have brought this up as well. Progress can be tracked in quality over quantity. NaNoWriMo kind of makes you feel like you have to write really quickly. And while I do think that write like fast drafting is a muscle and a skill that you can exercise and it is a really valuable skill to learn. If you don't want to do that, if it's not fun, then I don't think there's any problem with giving yourself the room to write slowly. I am a very quality over quantity writer. I am the type of writer that will feel really accomplished, um, not necessarily if I've written, you know, a thousand words in a day, but maybe if I've written 300, 400 words, but I feel really good about those words. That is what I find rewarding, so I always try to focus on that. The other thing you can do is to just track time spent rather than words written. So I know that there are a lot of writers who do this. Instead of thinking about the word count, instead they'll just um, try to write for an hour a day and it doesn't really matter how much actual words they put on the page, but they know that they've spent that one hour of dedicated time working on their book, thinking about their book, steeping themselves in their book. And that is valuable time. Don't let anyone tell you that even just thinking and brainstorming on your book is not valuable time because it is, fight me on it. <laughs> um, my next tip is one that I think is already a really common one, but I think it needs to be said. If you have a short attention span or if you just get drained from really long writing sessions, write in multiple sessions. Instead of writing four hours at a time, write five minutes at a time um, and scatter it throughout the day. That way it's a lot less daunting to have to carve time out of your day. My next tip, identify what distracts you and use it as a reward or alternatively, cut yourself off from it. 
<laughs> I don't know which one is healthier. I think it depends on the writer. I personally do the former where I use things as rewards, but I do think in general, really think long and hard about the other things that stop you from writing. So for me, it is watching like a TV show or scrolling on YouTube or um, playing video games. I would say nine times out of 10, it is a lot more enticing for me at the end of the day to do any of those things instead of writing. I think going into NaNoWriMo, it's very important that you are aware of what your distractions are. That way you can have a plan to mitigate them. I know a lot of people use like blockers on their computer or their phone where you can't use, you can't browse the internet for a certain time of the day. So that way you won't be tempted to like open YouTube or whatever, you turn your notifications off, whatever it is. But alternatively, and this is what I do for video games, I don't let myself like start playing video games in a day if I haven't done at least five minutes of writing. So that way when I do finally get to play video games at the end of the day, I know that I at least tried to write, you know? And so I feel a lot less guilty and I feel like I kind of earned my set like I, i've kind of earned the treat at the end of the day and then lastly just find ways to stay motivated my main three tips for motivation number one write yourself a mission statement at the start of the month i think a mission statement is it's going to look different for different writers but because at the start of nanorimo everything is going to be super fun but towards the end of nanorimo you're going to be like at the lowest of the lows wondering if anything that you've done this month is worth it. And I think it's important to always just have some kind of thing that you can go back to that reminds you why you set out to write this story in the first place. What was the purpose? What were you excited about? What is like the soul and the heart of why you need to tell this story? So what I always do before I start writing any book is a book blurb. I try to write my blurb like as if it was marketing copy as if it was the back of the book and that gets me really really excited about the plot i am almost like reading what a reader would read if they were picking up my book on a bookshelf this also helps me see what the value of the story is like what is like the, the core mystery what would entice someone to pick this up off the shelf another thing that you can do and i've done this for some of my projects is just a trope love list like list out all the tropes that you're really excited to write in your story i think that this is um especially fun if you write um, speculative fiction or if you write romance because these genres tend to have a lot they tend to be a lot more trope driven and it can be fun to kind of just like list out everything that you're excited to write whether it's you know enemies to lovers um grumpy ex ball of sunshine whatever it is whatever your favorite tropes are um it can be fun to just list them all in one place another thing that you can do write the backstories of your characters that can get you really excited to just like dive into who your characters are i think this works especially if you are a character driven writer like me I'm such a character driven writer. I, the whole purpose that I do write stories is to explore my characters and their relationships with, with each other and their internal conflicts. It's like everything that I get excited for. So I like to write out my character's backstories. I like to know um, where were they born and how were they raised and what are their relationships with their parents <laughs> and what are their personalities and what are the experiences that they've gone through that have shaped who they are prior to the story even beginning. So yeah, that's all for like mission statement stuff. My second tip to stay motivated is to have some other non-writing inspiration, whether that is a music playlist, whether it's a mood board, have something that is not necessarily the book itself you can use as motivation to get excited about the story so for me i'm not like a huge mood board person but i do really love making playlists obviously this is not time spent writing but i think the process of like imagining the sequencing of your scenes and imagining 
the atmosphere and steeping yourself in the environment and the tone of your story through a medium that's not necessarily the writing itself honestly really great for getting excited about your story for every project i've worked on i've always like put together a music playlist and even when i'm not writing whether i'm just like doing work doing chores i'll just like play the music in the background and it will get me thinking about my story even when i'm not actually working on my story and then my last tip under the umbrella of staying motivated is to just have someone who you can talk to your project about it doesn't have to be a writer obviously if you have a writer in your life that you can like talk to your writing about that's great but i don't even think it needs to be a writer i think as long as the people in your life um know that you're doing NaNoWriMo and that really understand what NaNoWriMo means to you or what writing means to you. Um, I think A, that helps you guard your time a lot easier and I think a lot of times for those of us who aren't professional writers, it can feel kind of like dumb to tell people like, oh no, I need to write today because it doesn't feel as important. But if you have people in your life that do understand how important it is to you, it, the process of writing will feel less solitary. And I think that's really, really important for staying motivated. Another reason that it's good to let people into your writing a little bit is because you can talk about it. You know, you can talk about your book, you can talk about where you're at, what scenes you've just written. This is one of the things that has really, really helped me stay motivated about my writing is just having people in my life who like understand why it's important to me and that dedicating my time to it is really important so that is all for my tips if you guys are doing NaNoWriMo let me know what you're working on I'm always really curious the ways that people are modifying their NaNoWriMo goals or what they're working on um, if you are doing it the right way, the traditional way, let me know. Best of luck. I think the number one thing with Nano is that it should be fun. That is all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.